All right, so what's going on, everybody? We got 541. It says water enters the horizontal circular cross-sectional sudden contraction nozzle. It's a little crazy to read. Uh, at section one with a uniformly distributed velocity of 25 feet per second and a pressure of 75 PSI. Uh, the water exits from the nozzle into the atmosphere at section two, uh, where the uniform distributed velocity is 100 feet per second. So we gotta determine the axial component of the anchoring force required to hold the contraction in place. So let's get started. All right, so we got a lot of knowns here. Um, let's go ahead and get those out the way right. So first thing right is we're dealing with water. So and this is in PSI, feet, all that good stuff. So this is going to be density of water at 1.94 slugs per feet uh, cubed. Now, um, I'm going to work in inches. Right, because PSI is in inches, uh, the diameter is in inches, velocity is in feet, so we'll get that converted to inches, it's easier. So the density of water is actually um, this number. So this is per feet cubed, so if you multiply this by feet is going to be up top, one foot is 12 inches, right? Um, then we got a cubit because this is cubed. So the feet cubed cancel out with this feet cubed and you divide this number by 12, then by 12, and then by 12 again, three times, right? So your new density is 0 0.001123. This is slugs per inch cubed. So that's that conversion. Um, What else? They give us a diameter three inches so the area is pi r squared right um 1.5 squared times pi that will give you 7.07 .07 inches squared um they give us pressure at 0.1 that is 75 pounds per inch squared psi uh what else they give us p2 it's atmospheric pressure that's just zero so that's easy v1 that is 25 feet per second again times the conversion which is one foot is 12 inches feet cancel out so v1 is actually 300 inches per second similarly with v2 right um it's 100 feet per second, so I'll write it down. Then when you convert that, multiply by 12 again, similarly to this one, um, you will get 1,200 inch per second. And I think that's it, right? We got everything covered. Um, we don't know the diameter here, but because of continuity, we know that the mass flow rate at 0.1 is equal to the mass flow rate at 0.2. Now, let me move this over here, so step two. So I just, M1 is equal to M2, right? Uh, that means Q1 is equal to Q2. Because mass flow rate is just uh, rho AV, and if density is the same here and the uh, the same here, they just cancel out and you just get AV. And AV is just flow rate. So you will get A1 is, oh, I'm sorry, not equal to, A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2, right? Cool, so um, we could go ahead and get the area for the second point right there. Um, that's gonna be, what was it gonna be? A1, 7.07, .07, just plugging in the numbers, times 300 inch per second is equal to A2 times 1200. Um, if you do that, 
I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. A2 is equal to 1.768 inch squared. Now, just FYI, if you find the solution online, um, they do this, M1 is equal to M2. So they don't even find the area, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so you know row one, A1, V1, um, get that number. And then uh, you'll see why they uh, they uh, use this method. I guess, I don't know if it's easier for me, this was easier, but whatever way you wanna see it. Um, so step three. Let's go ahead and start the free body diagram. So here's the control volume. They kind of laid it out right from here all the way here. All that. So let's go ahead and draw that out. Like this. Like this, right? Like this. Not the best, but it's all right. So this is considered the inlet, right? Um, fl water is flowing this way, so this is the pressure acting here. Let's go ahead and do that, right? And again, it always acts towards the control volume. And then right here, it's like this. Right? So this is P1 a1 this is let me see if you can see right there there we go p2 a2 and then we know there's flow right velocity one is going this way and velocity two is going this way same direction uh what else oh yeah we're looking for the anchoring force so the axial component of the anchoring force so what that means axial it just means a parallel to the in this case, the flow. So there's gonna be a force in the X direction. And again, we don't know how it's going. Let's just assume it's going in the positive X. So this is our coordinate system, X, Y. And again, this force it depends. It doesn't have to be here exactly. It could be here, here, here. It just doesn't matter. But in this case, um, in these problems, you rarely do moments, if I remember correctly. So, I mean, you do some of the forces in the X direction. and. That's how it works itself out. So uh, we got all that good stuff. Um, I don't think there's anything else. So step four, um, sum of the forces in the X is equal to the sum of the linear momentum. Cool, yeah. Okay, so in the X direction for forces, we have a pressure times area right here. So P1, A1 in the positive X direction, right? Um, we have a negative P2, A2, because it's going in the negative X. We have our force, right? What we're trying to find, and we assume that's in the positive X. And then that's the last one, and it's equal to these two uh, linear momentum values. So um, let's go ahead and do row a1 right let's do this one first now it's an inlet so it's a negative watch my other videos if you want better explanation but i figured by now you know how to determine negative or positive so inlet negative and then positive x direction for velocity so this one's positive now the next one this will always be positive when you add more terms because again these signs will fix themselves in the end. So plus row A2, let's do V2, that is outlet, it's outlet so it's positive, and it's going in the positive X direction, so two positive V2s. Uh, we could go ahead and start plugging in, um, let's go ahead and pressure one is 75, times 7.07, .07, right? Let me move my paper, but I'm just plugging in the numbers. We have P1, A1, oh, this goes to zero. That's easy, cool. So zero, because P2 is zero. Uh, plus Fx, um, 
is equal to 1.94 times area of 1, 0 0.07 times negative 300 times 300, right? So that's this term. Now we're doing the next term plus density, which is 1.94 times 1.768 times 1,200. Two times 1,200. So I just plugged in right there, right? Um, <clears throat> density, area, V1, V1, density, area of 2. This is area of 1. V2, V2. So now hold on. Before we continue, this if you do the math, you're not going to get the right f of x. So... This is what I hate about these units. It's uh, For some reason, it's a little harder to work with slugs and all that good stuff. So look, this right here, 75, is PSI, right? So this is pound per inch squared. This area, let me move it up. This area is inch squared. So if you do the math here, this is going to be a pound unit. These cancel out. So that's going to be a pound. We're looking for f of x in pounds, so this answer should be in pound. Now that's where it gets tricky. So here, this is a slug. Oh, snap, hold on. This is not 1.94. Use the wrong one. So this number and this number. This is slug per feet cubed. We want the slug per inch cubed. So this number is 0 0.001123. If you can't see it, just hear what I say. So I can make this bracket bigger right here. 0.001123. There we go. Cool. So glad I caught that. So this right here is slug per inch cubed. This area is inch squared. This velocity, well, when you multiply the two velocities, each one is feet per second or inch per second. So you'll get inch squared per second squared. Okay, so now check it out. Inch squared times inch squared, that's inch to the fourth. Cancel the inch cubed at the bottom. You get slug inch per second squared. So you'll get slug inch per second squared okay but if you remember from the, the si units a newton which a newton is a pound is equal to kilogram meter per second squared so we got second squared on both that's cool slug kilogram that's cool but meter this should be in feet so these two terms, um, rho a v squared, rho a v squared, they should be multiplied by, I think it's 12, right? Or we divide by 12. Yeah, we divide by 12. That's how you convert. So these will cancel out. You'll get slug feet per second squared, which is what we want. That's a pound. So a pound, let me write that down, is equal to a slug feet per second squared. And to get these into pound um, units, all you got to do is divide by 12. So these numbers divided by 12. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase this because it's just going to make it messier. So that is why we divide all this by 12. And all this by 12. Now these should be pound. Now that's pound now, if that makes sense. So this is pound, this will be pound, this is pound, this is pound. That would have messed you up if you didn't catch that, just uh, be careful. So uh, do the math, 75 times 7.07, .07, that is 530.25 plus fx. If you do the math here, you will get negative 59.25. 55 plus because the negative right there's a negative 
and plus 238.26. Do the math right here. You will get f of x. Let me move it up in case you can't see. Right there. f of x is equal to negative 351.54 pounds. And we assumed it going this way. So, this way. Now, since it's a negative, that just means we assumed wrong. So, f of x is equal to positive 351.54 pounds in this direction. So, both answers are right. Um, get used to doing this little arrow for these problems um, when you get your answer on the exam, because if you just leave negative 351, your professor will have no idea in what direction that is. So whatever way you assumed on your free body diagram, that's the one you put here. And then if it's a negative, just change the direction and now it becomes positive. So that's the answer on this one. Again, just be careful um, that your units line up. Uh, that's why I hate working with these English units, man. It's just more of a headache. It's easier to see it with Newtons, or well, at least for me, but uh, that's the answer to this one. So good luck.